Hello, welcome to Andy Odomok Dongle Madness. And today we have some crazy program <laughs> with our special guest here, Ben, Ben Ao. And you would probably know him from his head file name Havelock, was it? Havelock, yeah. Yeah. Okay, check it out. I think uh, many of you would have read his fine review. And obviously, the reason that my best buddy here is here with me today because we're going to do something crazy, which is basically a blind test on how does dongle compete against each other, especially driving something crazy like this. 400 HE. This HE. is a uh, high fire man HE 400 SE. Yeah. 91 dB of sensitivity and obviously one of the hardest to drive high five men that you can get i think the next one that's harder to drive than this is probably susbara yeah, <laughs> i think so yeah so the whole idea behind it is to find out whether ben can actually hear any kind of difference whether it's driven by uh desktop amp setup or just uh, dongles and in particular we have four dongles that we are trying today so later I will reveal exactly what are those four and in fact I will actually tell Ben what are those four first. So Ben, why don't you just put this thing up first? Sure. Alright. And let me know if you are hearing anything right now. Let me just reset this. So oh, there will be like uh dongle number one, yeah, number two, number three, and number four. Dongle number one. Right, so the audience can see that I am pointing to dongle number one now, which is this one. Okay. Okay. Ben doesn't know which one is dongle number one, and dongle number two is this one. Okay. And dongle number three is this one. And dongle number four is this one. Right. So we will switch to dongle number one first. Ben, are you ready? Yeah. So I'm plugging in dongle number one. So let's just play from the start. Dongle number two, please. Okay. Let me just pause this and switch to dongle number two now. And play for the from the start. Let's play from the start. Okay. Dongle number three, please. Okay, let me just pause this. Stop. And switch to dongle number three, right? Yeah, yeah. Dongle yeah. three. Again, play from the start. Number four, please. Okay, let me just stop this. Pause. Plugging into number four now. To be honest with you, I'll be very surprised if you can pinpoint all four. Uh, I think I have uh, formed my opinion. I mean, you ready? Yeah, I. I, I I don't know, I think so. <laughs> it's okay, this is not rocket science, okay? This is meant to be fun and yeah. kind of like, you know, like I said, if you can guess all four, I will be super amazed. <laughs> I pretty much get the idea, but, I yeah. mean, yeah, because, yeah, I think so, it's just... It's okay if you guess wrong with your okay? Nah. Nobody will penalize you. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you ready now or you want a bit more test? Uh, I think I'm I'm ready. Because, okay. Let's yeah. just stop. Or else I'll I'll we'll get more confused. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. It's um it's hard to distinguish between between uh, each of them. Uh, unless uh, I don't know. Um, uh, but 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 it's doable. I think uh, if you. Uh, have a sharp hearing. Yeah. Um, but 
generally what you are saying is that it's pretty much very close yeah very close uh, in terms of uh, overall um, how do you say um, overall presentation but uh, there are subtle differences in uh, in terms of which separate them uh, in terms of uh, the note age and then the the, the, the age of the, the timbre uh, okay. and then the, the depth yeah the depth definitely I, I can tell the depth and uh, what else um, the density of the note not weight basically the richness of the sound mm, yeah. Yeah. yeah basically yeah. right I think, yeah okay so basically what my as my conclusion from what Ben is saying is that right the general overall team is basically right there are differences but they are not that too significant to a point that it require critical listening mm -hmm. to differentiate am I correct in saying that yeah it's about that I mean yeah. it's just not like immediately you put a headphone you immediately can tell but it if, if you yeah. if you measure them in in terms of loudness level there there are if you can uh, fine tune them to uh, the same loudness level, then I I, I don't think it's gonna be um, easy to distinguish. Okay. okay, so it's not exactly easy. All right. So now, go going to the golden question. What do you think? Okay. Um, number one is. I think number one is either. Uh, uh, yeah, that's the fam very familiar to me. It's a B1. Yeah. And you guessed correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! The reason is that B1 have a special sound. And the reason <laughs> that this is until today my favorite and his favorite as well. Yeah. Because Ovidius B1 have a certain way about the production of the sound that makes it so very airy, open and rich in a way that it is very difficult to ignore that kind of what do you call it uh, uniqueness to Ovidius B1 yeah. because not many dongle can actually present that kind of ethereal sound as I would describe it okay so what is dongle number two then um, that one it's a little bit analytical to my ears I think um, just a little bit analytical you mean yeah a bit more a little, a little bit just it's not it's still not musical. too drastic yeah I, I think i think it's the eye bustle i i think <laughs> correct again <laughs> so which only means that the only two remaining is between this stack and this abigail pro right so that which abigail one is, is that abigail pro is so so good i, I think so it's, it's, abigail it's on the same level of yeah almost like b1 that's why I always switching between B1 and Abigail Pro. I think yeah. maybe Abigail Pro is the number three, if I'm not mistaken. You guess it correct. And this is definitely number four. This is why I call him here. <laughs> you know what? Even though he's, he doesn't see whatever that we, you know, whatever that we did just now, he guessed so, so all our right. four. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And what makes you think that you were able to tell the difference actually the key thing that you would immediately register on your mind when you say that you can tell the difference okay um how do you say um the the megatron is running through yeah this the h duo okay yeah. um it's just it has a how do you say um bigger. a little bit more depth yeah bigger headroom basically I mean, you know, ex the, the, the yeah, yeah, the that's that's one thing. Yeah, uh, it, it has large headroom. You can you can tell you can just blast it without any distortion. You you can tell it. You you, you just the feel. Yeah, right. it's it's a more lively. Um, and then the smoother top end, you know. Top end. Yeah, because upper because frequency. This, yeah, this is this is planar because and I, I don't I don't think I have heard uh, that kind of because I've heard, I've owned HD 400 SE before yeah but but uh, 
that sound that sound different than, than sound than, different than what I different heard. as a man of saying better uh it's it's not particularly better but uh, uh it's just it's just smoother and and smoother. Then, okay. smoother and then that's fair now right so basically right now i think on a train years right even blindfolded somebody like ben right <laughs> would be able to tell the difference between highly powered which is this is 1003 milliwatt yeah power. you can tell it's okay. just it's and just abiga pro is less than 100 milliwatt but example. this thing is surprising this is surprisingly good i mean what it's it's good it's, it's like yeah. it's just good <laughs> it's just you don't expect something this small to yeah, sound, yeah, I, sound that big right i was quite surprised because uh, i don't think I, i i don't know this is abiga pro because until you tell me so and then i just what this is nice and this is one vrms only okay, okay. with less than probably like like i say i don't know for sure i forgot but it's probably around 100 milliwatt so there's a different of 1003 milliwatt to 100 milliwatt per channel i'm talking about per channel okay that is really good i mean so what surprise if let's say you are not comparing between let's say uh this stack to this right would you still be satisfied listening to this i think so because it it has the the weight it has the um it has a good headroom i mean you can i i, I feel like i can blast it more and like crank it up more but uh, there's no indication of distortion or let's say it's get yeah right? yeah I, i i can tell because it's planar you can easily tell if if it's going to start to distort or but um, i think is that's really an eye opener and the reason i'm calling you here because i had the same kind of dilemma like you <laughs> when i had spent hours and hours and days on this listening to all these dongles yeah between this and small i was just like shit man am i hearing my sense of listening or what because why when i switch to my stack here and then i switch to a small dongle hey you know what right the difference is not that significant yeah yeah i will admit, i mean unless right? unless you just yeah. really, really critically yeah, yeah critically listen. because once i listen to this stack right i can feel that there's a depth like what ben says like the the you know the soundscape the yeah. headroom is the presentation like spacious is all, is all, it is uh, like upper frequency very smooth the yeah. rendering is very smooth and then the the resolution and imaging is but whenever i switch to this the thing that surprised me the most is that i am not feeling any kind of sense of loss yeah nothing is missing i, I don't feel that it's missing right and so the the most surprising thing is that despite listed at 1 vrms when i switch to my pc the volume that you listen to just now was actually around 46 out of 100 not even half not even 50 out of 100 and this thing can go louder if abigail is already performing at that level i don't have to say much about this too okay because like ben said dco3 pro is basically probably a bit more analytical yeah less organic yeah yeah you can tell it yeah but The better balance is achieved by Ovidius B1 combining between analytical and musical organic touch to it. Yeah. Okay. So that is when you switch into critical listening mode. So that's to be honest, it's, it's, it's um, quite hard to differentiate between the Epigo Pro and the Ovidius B1 actually until until I notice. Yeah, I have switched many times and I noticed that. Uh, how do I say that age uh, and then and the, the, decay. The, the the yeah the decay the 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 smooth presentation of the B1. I mean, it's not smooth. I, I don't know what's the term. Uh, it's very difficult to describe. I can only describe <laughs> it's B1 sound. Yeah. All right, and it, that's one of the very reasons it, I still it got it got that that velvety, but not too velvety. It got the age. I mean, the yeah. the, the, the the energy, the the creeps, the attack, yeah, yeah, the creeps attack, and then uh, but. It's still smooth and 
I don't know. It's just you. You know. You you will know. This is Obidius. We uh, once you yeah. heard it. I mean, once you listen to it. Whoever you, owns Obidius B1 will understand what Fred is <laughs> saying. I can understand what he's saying because I listen to this frequently. I've been keeping this, and he have one as well. And also a few other listeners of uh, Obidius. It is not the best in measurement or anything like that. Yeah. It's still the best in analog sound presentation. Okay, so. There you have it. <laughs> I hope all you have been entertained. It's quite an eye opener for me as well, and I really would like to thank Ben for his time. It wasn't easy for him. Trust me. Oh. Like, we have been like you know, <laughs> to do a doing this with few pitfalls here and there, but in the end we managed to pull it off. All right. Okay then. Thank you for watching and thank you to Ben and see you next time on Andy Audible Dongle Manners. Bye. Bye.